for Worldwide Communion Sunday. So let's begin. Let's stand. We're going to start with Better is One Day in Your House. How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord Almighty, for my soul longs and even faints for you. For here my heart is satisfied within your presence. I sing beneath the shadow of your wings. Better is one day in your courts, better is one day in your house, better is one day in your courts and thousands elsewhere. One thing I ask and I would see to see your beauty. To find you in the place your glory dwells One thing I ask and I would seek To see your beauty To find you in the place your glory dwells Better is one day in your courts, better is one day in your house, better is one day in your courts and thousands elsewhere. Better is one day in your courts, better is one day in your house, better is one day in your courts and thousands elsewhere. Thank you. you may be seated. Light of the world, you stepped out into darkness. Open my eyes, let me see. Beauty that made this heart adore you. Hope of a life spent with you. So here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you're my God. You're altogether lovely, altogether worthy, altogether wonderful to me. King of all days, oh so highly exalted, glorious in heaven above. Humbly you came to the earth you created, all for love's sake became poor. Here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God. You're altogether lovely, altogether worthy, altogether wonderful to me. I'll never know how much it cost to see my sin upon that cross. I'll never know how much it cost to see my sin upon that cross here i am to worship here i am to bow down here i am to say that you're my god you're altogether lovely altogether worthy altogether wonderful to me Lindsay's away in New Jersey today visiting family, and DJ wrote to me this morning, and he's tied up in traffic and running a little late, so he may come in in a minute. But I sure appreciate Ben and Shelby coming and helping. They're really dependable and help out a lot. Let's join in singing all in all. You are my strength when I am weak. You are the treasure that I seek. You are my all in all. Seeking you as a precious jewel, Lord, to give you up, I'd be a fool. You are my all in all. Jesus, Lamb of God, worthy is your name. Jesus, Lamb of God, worthy. Taking 
my sin, my cross, my shame. Rising again, I bless your name. You are my all in all. When I fall down, you pick me up. When I am dry, you fill my cup. You are my all in all. Jesus, Lamb of God, worthy is your name. Jesus, Lamb of God, worthy is your name. And then let's join in singing Lamb of God. Your only Son, no sin to As the Kinson Trio. They're great. I know, they're really good. It's good to see you. Welcome to the rain. At least least it's not raining right now, I don't think. A respite. Steve uh, was in the Apple Festival in Irwin. It was a wash. Yeah. Remind me of apples. uh, When Janet and I were dating, our dads decided to make apple cider. And... uh, it was hard apple cider, and uh, they put too much whatever in it, and all of a sudden, all the, it's, it, all, they all popped up. 
<laughs> it's like a machine gun in the garage. <laughs> it all popped out. So you never know. But there's a, a good lesson there. We are really glad that uh, October is here. We, we survived the deluge at UNCC Friday. Cindy kept us in line. Didn't sell much food, but we had a good time. 30, we're saying 34, five people. It was great. So, anyway, the scripture from the psalm is Psalms 26. Vindicate me, O Lord, for I have walked in my integrity and I have trusted in the Lord without wavering. Prove me, O Lord, and try me. Test my heart and mind. For your steadfast love is before my eyes, and I walk in faithfulness to you. I do not sit with the worthless, nor do I consort with the hypocrites. I hate the company of evildoers and will not sit with the wicked. I wash my hands in innocence, and I go around your altar, O Lord, singing aloud a song of thanksgiving and telling all your wondrous deeds. O Lord, I love the house in which you dwell, and the places where your glory abides. Do not sweep me away with sinners, nor my life with the bloodthirsty, those in whose hands are evil devices and whose right hands are full of bribes. But as for me, I walk in my integrity. Redeem me and be gracious to me. My foot stands on level ground. In the great congregation, I will bless the Lord. We turn again once more to Mark in a series that he is sharing with us about what it means to be in the kingdom of God. Some Pharisees came to test him. They asked, is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife? He answered them, what did Moses command you? They says, Moses allowed a man to write a certificate of dismissal and to divorce her. But Jesus said to them, because of your hardness of heart, he wrote this commandment for you. But from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no one, <coughs> let no one separate. Then in the house... The disciples asked him again about this matter. He said to them, whoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery against her. And if she divorces her husband and marries another, she commits adultery. People were bringing little children to him in order that he might touch them. And the disciples spoke sternly to them. But when Jesus saw this, he was indignant and said to them, let the little children come to me. Do not stop them. For it is to such as these that the kingdom of God belongs. Truly, I tell you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will never enter it. And he took them up into his arms, laid his hands on them, and blessed them. May God add his blessing to the reading and the hearing of his word. And may we know something of the truth of that word in the living of our lives. May we pray. Our Father, we come into this place. We come thankful and grateful. We come with an open heart. We come with open minds. We come with open arms. And later on, we'll be coming to your table. And we come to that table in thanksgiving. And as we've gathered together, we remember our many cares, our many concerns. We Continue to remember David P. out in the hospital in, in Charlotte. We lift him up to you. We know that you were there, that you're beside him and with him, and we thank you for that. We remember Norman Curlin in the hospital at Northeast. We lift him up to you, and we thank you for him. We received word this morning that Archie Ritchie is there, too, with observation. And we thank you for Archie, and we know that you will be with him as he continues to struggle and adjust to medical conditions. We're thankful most of all that you are the great physician and that you come into our lives with the many things in which we need. You challenge us, but most of all you walk beside us and with us. Let us know and open our lives to your very presence. And as we do that, let us be challenged to how we will live our lives with other people 
of responsibility and integrity in this world. Oh, help us to, to have minds to hear and to see and to do. And we thank you. We continue to remember so many in our world that are hurting. We're thankful that we were able to bring food this day to feed part of those. And we ask thy blessings in all the ways that it will be used. And we know it will. So we come now. We come in worship. We come in praise. We come in love. We come in service. We're your children. You are our Father. In your name we do pray. Amen. Join in singing, He is Lord. He is Lord. He is Lord. He is risen from the dead and He is Lord. Every knee shall. Our Father, because you are Lord, we come back to you and we give you these of our gifts. We're thankful that we can give. We thank you that you've given us so ever so much. We're thankful for what this, these gifts will do, what they will mean, how they will be used in your kingdom. Bless the gift and the giver, even now, in your name. Amen. Praise God from Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above, ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Praise God. This series in Mark. The last several weeks, we, Jesus has set his face toward Jerusalem. He is heading toward Jerusalem. And during that time, he is teaching his disciples. He is teaching the people. This is uh, uh, the last opportunity that he will have to do these very things. And so as he goes to these places, uh, the, the crowds are there. And as he, he, they have been walking along, uh, he has told the disciples exactly what is going to happen, and they have responded in ways that he was not expecting them to. Uh, they wanted to know instead who's going to be the greatest. And he sternly uh, told them, and uh, as we ended last week, he said, he talked about salt again. You be the salt and be at peace one with another. And now he's in Judea. And as he's in Judea, he is speaking, and the crowds are coming to him. 
And with the crowds, the Pharisees come to pose a question to him, to trick him. That's been the pattern. That's been the task. That's, uh, that's the, the, the gotcha. Uh, you know, in the, this is a great uh, thing that's coming the next two years. But, um, oh gosh, it'll seem like two years, but it's only a year or so. This election that's coming. Uh, there'll be a lot of gotcha moments. Uh, we already are, you know. Uh, they wait and they see and they try to, to get you. And, uh, the hardest job, I, I think, in the next several uh, months will be to be a fact checker. That would be the hardest job in, in the campaign. But the Pharisees come and they want to catch Jesus. They want to catch him because obviously the crowds are coming to him. The crowds understand there's something that he is saying. There's something that he is doing that is not only very appealing, very compelling. There is something that is resonating at a wonderful level because he is telling them something about who God is. As Christians, we understand that Jesus is God incarnate. He is the one who pitched his tent with us, who came not only to tell us, but to show us to live it out in his life as to what it means to have and know the grace of God. And he is doing that. He is doing it by who he touches, who he speaks to, who he associates with, all those very things. This is the one who is embodying it. This is the one who is living it. And he is a threat to that establishment. He is a threat to the ones who have built their lives on this holiness code, the, this threat of this, what do you do and how do you do it and what do you don't do and what do you, how do you not do it? All of those count. And so they come to him and they say, we, we, we know one. We, we, we know one that will get you. Later on, they will, you, you get a better one. They'll talk about taxes. That's always a good one to talk about. They said, we, we, got, we got you on this one, Jesus. Should a man divorce his wife? Now remember, this is a male-centric world that we're talking about. And so then Jesus shares with them very, very carefully, what does it say? Why did they do that? He said, what does Moses say? What is it that Moses did? Moses, who is the giver of what? The law, the writer the, the, uh, that is attributed to the first five books and his name is honor or whatever uh, on the books of Moses. Says, what did Moses do? And he said he permitted a decree to be written. And so what has happened in the contemporary culture of that day? How have they used that opportunity in a, in a way? In this very male-dominated society, that man has come to believe that he has the right simply to divorce his wife by saying the three words, I divorce you, I divorce you, I divorce you. And then the decree is written. That is the decree. So he doesn't like a particular pot of stew. Maybe there's too much salt in the stew. Ah, that's enough. I've had enough. This woman can't cook. Or she can't do this. Or she can't do that. That's the kind of society that we're talking about. And these people look for an excuse and when you're looking for an excuse, one excuse is as good as the next. You can find it. You can find an excuse for anything. We're very rational. For being very rational human beings, we're very irrational. But that's another story, another sermon, another day. You can find a rationalization for just about anything you want to do. It may not be true, it may be not right, but you can find it. Jesus is saying, you're missing the point. You're missing the boat. You're missing the intent. The intent is companionship. The intent is love. The content is being together. And the intent is this is what God wanted. This is what God desired. This is what God in, had in mind. And this is what you've done with it. You've done something else with it. And now you're looking for an excuse and you think you can just wipe your hands clean of it. And his words were so troubling to the disciples that they came to him later. What, what are you talking about? What, what do you mean? And Jesus says that you're never unmarried. 
That's really what he's saying here. We understand that. There's always been that great debate in scientific cultures about genetics and environment. There's a truth, they're both there. We have a, certain genes that make us do certain things, perhaps, that make up our makeup. They let us, certainly let us know if you're going to have gray hair like us or no hair at all. I'm not going <laughs> I'm not going to look around. Blue eyes, brown eyes, whatever. We, we have our genetic base that also has far-reaching consequences. We also have the environment. The environment in which we've been nurtured, the environment in which we've been brought up, the, the environment that has made the difference to who we are and how we are. What kind of home did you have? What kind of love did you experience? All of those things make us who we are. And we can't change some of that right now, can we? It's, it's already there. Every experience that you have had in your life at this point, you can't undo. You have had it. It is a part of who you are. It is a part of your personhood. It is a part of what makes you who you are. If you have been married and you have been divorced, that person is always going to be in your marriage even today. Because they are there. One of the things that when I marry a divorced person, I ask them, can you get over it? Can you love again? Are you able to do those things? But the truth is still that that person and the hurts and the pain and the agony that you've experienced are there. And they will always be there. It's just what do you do with it and how you deal with it and how you're able by the grace of God to experience grace. And so when Jesus talks about this, he's really telling us a, a, a truth that is far beneath that surface. Now we like to, you know, we, we, we like to pick and choose our verses. Everybody does. Uh, and, and some people will, will especially pick this one out and say, oh, old well, man, you just, uh, uh, like divorce is the unforgivable sin. That's not what this is about. That would go against everything else that this is building up to. Jesus is just saying that these people who are trying to find a way to rationalize everything they do, that they are in the wrong. These scribes, these Pharisees that have come to him, that they think they've got a quick way out, just like they will do with their parents and inheritance. They will say, we'll give it to the church as a foundation and this and that, so it can't be taxed. And Jesus said, oh, they're calling it Corban. That's not it. You're denying your responsibility that you have. So... It's just not easy ways out. He would also say in the collection of sermons, we know it was a sermon on the mouth, that anybody that uh, uh, has lost in their heart commits adultery. So adultery is not the unpardonable sin. There is no unpardonable sin except for that constant refusal of understanding who Jesus is and when we build up that hardness of heart. When we isolate ourselves from the love of God. That's a, kind of a lot of sermons for another day. We understand this even more fully, when especially you always understand the progression of things. Jesus shared this very hard saying about life. Because this is how life is. This is the way it is. And this is the uh, just it. And then outside, he hears something that really makes him mad. When the scripture says he was indignant, that sort of raises eyebrows and hands and everything. He was indignant because he heard the people that were following him. They were keeping the children away from him. There was not time for them. They didn't want to be bothered by them. And he said, no, stop it. Let them come unto me. I make time. I give time. And then the key to it all is if you don't accept the kingdom of God, as we let these little kids, what does that mean? It means it's grace. It's God's grace that is extended to every one of us, and there is not one thing that can keep us from that grace. We open our hearts and our lives to it. We accept it. 
It's not divorce. It's not this. It's not that. He says, come. Come like the child. It reminds us that it's the church that we always have to take time for our children. Now, I think this is a grandparent speaking. I think we overtime our children. We overplan them. We overcommit them. And that's another story, another day, another time. But we as a church and we as a people and we as parents, we have to take time for them. We have to let them into our hearts and our lives and we have to give them a priority. We have to stop what we're doing and we have to listen and we have to let them come. That's what it's about. That's why they are so important. They are gifts from God. So this stern word that comes from Jesus ends with a hug, an embrace. It reminds us that we're all his children. Even for all of our mistakes, even for all of our shortcomings, we're all his children and we all come where we come to his table. We come to his table. And like children, we need to have that same joy when we understood God is great, God is good. We need that same joy when we understand that he has provided this as a loving parent, the creator. We take it. We share bread, companion, with bread. That's all companion means, with bread. Bread. This is the bread of life. This is the bread for our journey. This is the bread for this day. And the one who loves us, calls us to his table. Let us be like children. Let us love our children, all the children. Let us make time for them and for God. May we pray. Our Father, we come into this place, we come into this time. We come with thanksgiving, we come with thankful hearts. We come as Christians. We come to your table, knowing that we have not earned our place, we're not worthy of that place, but you have given us a place, you have made a place, you have opened the door, you have opened the way because you are the way, you are the truth and you are the life. And we thank you. Oh, Lord, forgive us for the times in our own haughtiness that we have thought we were better than anyone else. Forgive us when we have devised so many different means to get away from what we need to do. Forgive us when we have forgotten what matters the most. Forgive us. By your grace, by your love, we know we are forgiven people. Prepare our hearts and our minds for the celebration of your supper. In your loving and caring and precious name, we do pray. Amen. Our deacons will come forward. This is a special day in the life of the, the church, the church that is greater than our church, our particular congregation. Many, many, many years ago, it was felt that there was a need for churches all over, not just America, but all over the world, to celebrate one Sunday when they would all have communion. We call it World Communion Sunday, and that is what this Sunday is. I guess it was... 14 years ago, 13 years ago, I had the opportunity on that very first trip to the Ukraine to celebrate World Communion there. What a wonderful emblem, it was, a symbol it was to be in the friends that we had barely known and now we know quite well and to break bread with them. And uh, it was wonderful bread. It was homemade Ukrainian bread and it was really, really good. It was also homemade wine, but we won't go there.
It was the Ukraine. We sat there, and we who once were enemies shared in the bread and the wine. And as we shared in the bread and the wine, we knew that we were brothers and sisters in Christ. And that's what world communion is about. And no matter the color of our skin, no matter what accent in which we speak, no matter what language that we say, no matter what nation in which we belong, we are God's children in Christ. And we share together this day in the family of God. And we are grateful and thankful. Jesus said, as we said many times, he said, I have had much desire to share this meal with you. And so we come with the desire of communion, the desire of fellowship, the need for the love that is greater than we. So we come in thanksgiving. Donna Duncan, the chair of our DAC, and it will share with us the blessing for the meal. Dear Heavenly Father, we from um, among all others all over the world come to this table. We remember, we remember the sacrifice that was made, the body that was crucified, the blood that was shed, and the glorious resurrection, the victory over death. Help us to reflect on our own lives as we partake of, this, uh, of the elements of this meal. Are we spending enough time with you in prayer? If not, help us to make an appointment with you each day and keep that appointment. Are we glorifying you in our lives? Well, not 100% because we're human. So as we struggle and as we strive to be more like you, help us. Help give us the strength and the courage to be more like you in our daily living. And we thank you, Lord. We thank you for the gift of salvation, for it comes with your love, it comes with your mercy, it comes with your forgiveness. All this we ask in Christ's name. Amen. It was the feast of Passover. And in the words of that day, he transformed that feast into what we know as the Last Supper. We know as communion. What we know as a thanksgiving. And so we come this day to communion, World Communion Sunday. And we invite all of you. We invite all of you because this table is open to all who know Jesus Christ. And we invite you to partake. The bread that we are serving today and we will serve from now on will be gluten-free. There should be no barrier from anyone to share in the supper of the Lord. On that night, he took the bread and he broke it. He said, this is my body, broken for you. As you hold the bread, think of that. Think of that deeply into your whole life, your whole being, of where the presence of God is. He is our companion with bread on our journey. Word of God that we know in Jesus the Christ is simply go and serve.
this is the bread, not as our forebears ate in the wilderness where they would say, what is it? This is the bread of life, given for you and given for me. Take and eat it. On that same night, he took the cup He said, this is my blood that is shed for you. And he reminded us, reminded his disciples, even though it was not so long ago they asked would they be able to drink of the cup, they would be able. And you and I are able to drink of this cup. It is a cup of discipleship, but it is a cup of grace. It is a cup of love. It is a cup of life. It is the cup of giving. Receive it. hold individual cups but it is a common cup it is a common cup that we share this day with Christians around the world we are one in his love we are one in his service we are one in his spirit be one Everything is always an invitation in the faith. An invitation to walk on the journey. An invitation to belong. An invitation to be. It's our closing hymn as a hymn of invitation. Just a closer walk. And our invitation is to know that Jesus Christ is truly the Lord. The Lord of life. The Lord of love. The Lord of all. Our invitation is to walk with us. In our congregation. In our fellowship. Together here at McGill. Wherever God leads you, we invite you to respond as we sing Just a Closer Walk with Thee. I am weak, but Thou art strong. Jesus, keep me from all Satisfied as long 
walk with thee. Grant it, Jesus, is my plea. Daily walking close to thee. Let it be, dear Lord, let it be. Through this world of toils and snares, if I falter, Lord, who cares? Who my burden shares none but thee dear Lord none but thee just a closer walk with thee grant it Jesus is my Daily walking close to Thee, let it be, dear Lord, let it be. I like that one. I like them all. May we be seated? Let's get a blood report. We were here last Monday. I tried to give, <laughs> but uh, they couldn't get it out. And I promise I drank water. I don't know what the problem was. But anyway, we gave seven pints. So that was a little low, but still it was, it was raining and it kept some people away. Ten came, but there were seven who could, who could give the pints. And... Um, also, I'd like to remind you that I will be taking the clothes that have been brought to La Cherie at the open at the upper room ministry today. This week, I'll get them in my car today, but I'll take them tomorrow. And um, we will. Uh, this will be the last of the clothes that we'll be taking for a while until they let us know they appreciate all the clothes that we brought, but their closet's full, and so they'd like for us to hold back a little bit uh, for a little while. So. Um, I'll be taking those this week, so don't bring any more until we get the word from her that she needs some. Uh, thank you for coming out last Monday and giving the blood, and thank you for all the clothes that you have uh, cleaned out your closets and given for those who needed them. Oh, what else? Tracy. The Mary and Martha's potluck dinner is Thursday at 6.30. We're going to be making these lovely prayer blankets. Um, so if you haven't signed up and you'd like to sign up, there's a sign-up sheet on the back table back there in the corner. It's potluck. Uh, so sign up for what you'd like to bring. We'd love to see everybody there. Um, we're going to have some fun making the these blankets and some fellowship. So we'd love to have you there. Also, I want to remind everybody on November the 1st is the Living Wills and Healthcare Power of Attorneys. I got the PDF from hospice this week. Um, they're going to be bringing me what they're going to print out. They're going to print me out 15 of the flyers, and the notice to go in the paper is going to the paper sometimes in the next week or so. So everything's coming together, and it's going to be a really nice meeting. Thank you. Are they going to bring uh, DNRs too? All right, uh, Robert, where'd Robert go? Oh, uh, you're hiding. <laughs> uh, crop uh, hunger walk is uh, in two weeks, and I promise better weather than today. Uh, how can you help? You can pick up a packet if you haven't already. I got five left, and if we give those out today, I'll go pick up another 10. Uh, you can, if you're not walking, you can be a donor and you can uh, help Steve yes. uh, or others who have packets. 
Um, we hope to have about 40 or 50 there as we normally do. And uh, as I say, we'll have good weather that day. And everybody come out. Two o'clock at Far Seals, United Methodist Church in Concord. As a smart man, almost any weather's better than this. And I need all the help I can get. <laughs> That's a given. All right, other announcements? DJ, oh, there you are. He made it out of traffic. It's so fun living in Charlotte. It's so fun. <laughs> um, good morning, everyone. Um, just want to give an anticipatory uh, announcement. Uh, this year, the Fall Festival will be on October the 30th, not the 31st. It will be the day before. Uh, we will, um, on the 31st, a huge group of us will be at UNCC um, doing a game. So uh, we decided to move it up one day. So um, starting this week, next week, I will be, there will be announcements in the way, there will be things on the windows, the orange tubs will be at the, at the doors, so just letting you know to uh, start getting ready for the Fall Festival. Again, October 30th from 6.30 until 8.30. And that is a Friday night. So we, we are good at McGill, but we can't be at two places at one time. So, all right, other announcements? Thank you. And please bring your candy in. I'm, I'm really good at quality control. I, I really sampled way too many French fries uh, also Friday, uh, Friday night. <laughs> we received, you received your directory, or you should have received your directory last week from your deacon. If you haven't, make sure you do. Uh, but in that directory, you saw the list of this year's officers and committees. Uh, that comes as a report from the nominating committee. And we need to receive that report this morning. It does not need a motion. Laurie Anderson's chair of that committee. Uh, so you've seen that, you've read it, uh, and so there, it's before us to approve it. Uh, so any discussion? We don't need a second. We just need to. All right. If you approve that report, say aye. aye. Oppose. <laughs> Oppose. You can do all the work. <laughs> no opposition. So that report is received as given. Any other announcements? We're good. All right, let us stand for the benediction. And I go forth into this world. We have come to the table of the Lord. And as we've come to that table, may we have been nourished. Nourished in his love, nourished in his care, nourished in his tenderness. And may we be challenged. Challenged to go and serve as he served. Challenge to go and to be as he was. Challenge to go and live as he lived. For you are now his hands. You have his heart in you. Go and be. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, we do pray. Amen. You've been watching and listening to the morning worship service at McGill Baptist Church in Concord, North Carolina. Our pastor, Dr. Steve Ayers, delivered the sermon this morning. Of course, Holy Communion was observed. McGill Baptist Church is located at 5300 Poplar Tent Road. That's at the corner of George Lyles Parkway. It's exit 54 off of I-85. You're always welcome at McGill. You can get more information by going to our website, mcgillbaptist.org. Call the church office at 704-788-1180. Again, thank you for joining us at McGill. We hope you get a blessing from today's service.